responsibilities, perhaps playtime, to come and, and sit. So I really uh, I admire, I admire your efforts put into practice. This is maybe the third Genjo Koan retreat that we've done here since I've been, since I've been with you all. And we're just slowly moving through the Genjo Koan. In today's retreat, I'd like to offer basically two talks. Each talk has one point that I'd like to make. Okay. And we'll be talking about one sentence in each talk. Okay. So the, the point, the main overarching theme in the first talk right now is that every, from a Zen perspective, every moment is a moment of wisdom. Every moment is a moment of wisdom. Okay, and I'll, that's counter, that runs counter to our ordinary thinking. We think that there are stupid people and wise people. <laughs> and no pointed. Yeah, we're yeah. Gonna, we're gonna <laughs> I'm not the wise person. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, but that's how we did tend to think. And if you want to get some wisdom, you have to go somewhere. For example, you come to the Zendo and you get the wise teaching. But uh, uh, I get reminders that I'm not so wise. <laughs> uh, so you're not if you're if you came here for that, then you came to the wrong place. However, uh, we need to start somewhere, and why not here? We could start here. So I will do my best to offer you something. But like my teacher would say, I am your best worst example. <laughs> there is also in this. In this particular point, there is an underlying assumption of forgiveness. Zen Buddhism in general doesn't talk about forgiveness, say, in the way that Christianity, Judaism, Islam might talk about forgiveness, as le at least as I have experienced it. So we have to dig a little bit into it and and maybe bring it forward, but I think underlying this particular teaching is that you, you, you can't access wisdom without forgiveness. Dogen doesn't talk about forgiveness that I'm aware of. I've never heard him talk. The, the translations don't include that word as far as I know. I'm not a scholar though. 
but I think it's assumed. It's assumed here. The f further, what we tend to do is when we, and this is right out of Buddhist teachings, what we tend to do is look at the causes and conditions for something arising. And when we see what something is, we see where something will go to. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making sense? And then, but Dogen is saying that don't do that. <laughs> Dogen is going counter to Buddhist teachings here. He's saying, don't try to see what will happen. Don't look at where something came from, but appreciate this moment completely without getting lost in causes and conditions. That's why I say forgiveness is assumed in this particular teaching. Forgiveness is, is, there, is present, whether we recognize it or not. You can't do it without some degree of forgiveness. Right? If you have something in the past that happened, somebody hurt you in the past, he hurt me, he robbed me, he, a Buddha says, those who think that way will mm. not mm -hmm. attain peace of mind. Okay. So this teaching is saying, don't look at where something came from. Don't look at the cause and the effect. Just look at this particular moment right now, because it is never going to repeat itself. This particular moment right now will never ever repeat itself. And this is where we get screwed up. So the, the way that this is expressed, poetically, you might think, or linguistically, in Dogen's writing on, in Genjo Koan, is flowers fall even though we love them. Flowers fall. So we can look at these flowers. We can take this verse very literally and think of all oh, flowers. Yeah, we all appreciate flowers. Now, what's not to appreciate about the flowers? Anybody who would love flowers, right? They look at them, you see that there's a, there's a usually a, a pleasant fragrance. The sight of so it, it, it wakes up our sense of smell. The sight of them, the, the opening of the flowers, the colors, the the texture of the flowers, oftentimes soft petals for many flowers, soft petals. And Right, so it, it invokes that touch, the sense of touch, smell, sight. All of those, those senses are invoked with the flowers and there's this sense of appreciation of beauty of life. And the Buddha could be also symbolic of a flower. The Buddha can be symbolizing like a, a flower of enlightenment. Flowers fall even though we love them. Weeds grow even though we dislike them. The weeds grow. We don't like the weeds, especially around the vegetables <laughs> <laughs> and around the flowers. But they grow anyways. They, they grow even though we dislike them. Our teachers change. Our teachers die. And we can look at these flowers. I want to look at them in four different, maybe four, the four different categories of, of people. In Buddhism, we talk about the four categories of people from the most, right, the closest to us to maybe the most distant, but the first is parents, and then teachers, the state, the country. Or you could say, some people call it uh, friends, that category of friends. And the last one is all beings. Parents, teachers, friends, or the state, the government, and all beings. Those are the four. So let's take a look at the, the first one, parents. Uh, and I will use my own, um, this is why I tell you, I'm not the wisest guy. <laughs> I could be a wise guy. <laughs> I'm not a wise guy, if you know what I mean. But uh, I, I want to share my own 
screw ups with this, how I've messed up my, uh, first with my own father recently passing away in, in August and I had this idea that I would see him again before he died. I thought, I thought that was going to happen. I was getting ready, you know, he lives in Maryland, here I am in the Midwest. It takes time, we had to schedule. He helped me get a ticket. He helped pay for a ticket for me and, and my family to come. So there was every indication that he was failing in health, but I didn't think that he would die before the our arrival. But I wasn't also, I was not surprised when it happened. So it's so strange. The problem was there was a gap there. As soon as I thought, I, as soon as I thought, I'll see him again. That's coming out of a deluded perspective that things will repeat mm -hmm. themselves. That something is, that we, we have moments and then they repeat. We don't know. We don't know that that is actually going to happen. In fact, it won't happen. Even if, it, even if I did have a chance to see him again, it would have been a completely different moment. And I missed it because I was living in the past thinking, oh, I'll see him again. I know who he is. He's already changed. He's not that person anymore. I know who he is. That's how we think. As soon as we say, I know who that person is, there's no forgiveness either. Right? We're stuck in the past. So, parents. And I have to re now remind myself, oh, with my mother, she's still alive. Well, I can't look at her like, I, I don't know. Is she going to be around when I see her again? She called this afternoon. I couldn't talk with her. I, I talk with her regularly, but I can't let that get into my thinking and say, Oh, I gotta, you know, she wants to talk, I know what she wants to say. No, it's, it's, it's a new person. She's not the same person as supposed to. I can't, you know, we, we get into this habit of thinking a certain way. And then again, it happened again, December. Uh, Kyoki, um, she called and she said, it's, I, I'm not gonna, so this is moving to the category of teachers now. Actually, I'll back up. Nona, a couple years ago, I was here for a weekend, and I was getting ready to leave. I didn't contact Kilki. I knew Nona. This was before Nona passed away. I knew he was here. I didn't think. I didn't think I would never see him again. I thought I would see him again. In other words, I I I missed it. I missed it. I left thinking, I will come. I talked with Kilki. She says, why aren't you coming? Oh, it's just a lot, you know. And it was, it was a lot. I did what I could do. I'll come next month. I'll be here next month. He died before I could return. He died actually the day I returned. I missed him by about two hours. I got to the, to the hospital, the ICU. He had died just a couple hours prior to my arrival. I missed it. I, I had this idea, I'll see him again. And I got even closer with Kyoki. I had the great fortune to spend uh, the last two to three days of her life with her. We celebrated her birthday. I was so shocked. I, I didn't know it was her 